Welcome to another video by Ferros Technology. Today we want to talk about star schemas in database design. You know, what are they? I'm going to show you in Microsoft Access, although a lot of times you would do it in a more robust system that would manage a data warehouse or a data mart. Instructionally, it's just as effective to show you how to do it in Microsoft Access. So let's get started. In computing, star schemas or star model is the approach most widely used to develop data warehouses and dimensional data marts. The star schema consists of one or more fact tables referencing any number of dimension tables. The star schema gets its name from the physical model's resemblance to a star shape when the fact table is at the center and the dimension tables are surrounding it, kind of representing the star's points. The star schema separates business process data into facts, which hold measurable quantitative data about a business, and dimensions, which are descriptive attributes related to the fact data. Examples of fact data include sales price, sales quantity, time, distance, speed, and possibly weight measurements. Related dimension attributes might include product models, product colors, product sizes, geographic locations, and salesperson names. Fact tables record measurements or metrics for specific events. This is identified by the specific foreign key fields within the fact table that, as a combination, identify the event. Fact tables generally consist of numeric values and the foreign keys to the dimensional data where the descriptive information is kept. Fact tables are designed to a low level of uniform detail. Transaction fact tables record facts about specific events. Snapshot fact tables record facts about a specific point in time. Fact tables are generally assigned a simple primary key to ensure that each row can be uniquely identified. Dimension tables usually have a relatively small number of records compared to fact tables but each record may have a very large number of attributes to describe a fact in the fact table. Dimensions can define a wide variety of characteristics, but some of the common attributes defined by dimension tables can include time, geography, products, and possibly employees. Dimension tables are generally assigned a primary key, usually a single column integer data type. Ralph Kimball, a prominent authority in the data warehouse design field, stated that although the snowflake schema represents the hierarchical data, its normalization tends to impact the performance. So based on the fact that you know we have a snowflake schema pictured here, the purple ones on the outside are descriptions of the dimensions that have descriptions. What Ralph Kimball says is, is to avoid a snowflake schema as much as possible, simply because you can collapse the data and denormalize it from this point to a second normal form and represent the data just as effectively in a star schema as you can in a snowflake schema. So in essence, star schemas are denormalized meaning that the typical rules of normalization applied to transactional relational databases are relaxed during star schema design and implementation. The benefits of star schema de denormalization versus highly normalized schemas are that the join logic is generally simpler. It, this, it simplifies common business reporting logic like period over period reporting and as of reporting. They can provide reporting performance enhancements as well. Star schemas are used by all OLAP systems, basically to build cubes more efficiently. So star schemas are effective tools to make sure that your reporting is much quicker and easier for your, your customers. So the goal when you're creating a star schema is number one, you build a query that includes all the information that you need for your OLAP cube or other reporting that's necessary for the customer. Those goals, of course, and requirements are going to be collected so that you can do that. The next thing is from that query, you're gonna build a fact table that, that collects all the primary keys from each of the tables involved in that query. 
Then after that, you add aggregate information that the customer wants and needs for their reporting. So let me show you how to do that with a big example here. Here I have an example of our what our database looks like. Okay, um, when I say our database, it's the bookstore database that we've talked about in previous videos. You'll see on the left side of the screen, you see table stock, and then you see some information concerning certain attributes within table stock. On the right hand side, you see table ISBN and all the descriptive information about books. Now, table ISBN is linked to table stock because each stock has a book. Okay, so each stock ID represents a single book that's in stock. So what I want to do is I want to take this particular schema, I want to denormalize it to the point where we can put it in a star schema and link all the other tables to that fact table. So what we do is we take build a query and we're going to take all of these IDs that you see highlighted here. Then I'm going to grab the data in the fields shown there and aggregate that data in such a way so that the reporting can report on the number of books. And this, this in particular one is going to be focused on inventory and take snapshots of the inventory so that the users can then manage the inventory, report on inventory, know the value of the inventory. You know what finance people do with data. They, they need to aggregate it so that they can use it. So let's move forward. What we do then is we build the query and you can see in the query all the way across the top, uh, you'll see where I'm just collecting all the ID fields. So this query literally has all of those tables linked, just like you saw two screens ago. The query then pulls all of those fields into the actual query. And then I did put a timestamp and timestamp you see is now open paren and close paren now allows me to, to show you when the snapshot has been taken. Uh, a good bit of information for, for any user. I am also have a requirement of the, the removed field in the far right. Um, any book that's been sold or removed from the data still has its stock ID so we can see the items sold and that could be in another cube. But in this particular one, we want to see the items that are still in inventory. So my remove status is false. It's not been removed yet. So there's all of my ID fields. And that's how I, I built that query up. Now, what happens then is it ends up looking like this. You see the center fact table with all of the IDs and you see all of the other tables attached directly to that fact table. Now, this is the schema that we would move forward with. You'll notice that all of the tables link directly to the fact table. So all of my descriptions and all of my dimension tables off to the side that give me information about the IDs can be pulled into whatever query the users want. Um, I have in the center table critical information that allows them to aggregate levels of stock, for example. They can just remove the stock ID from the query and they can go ahead and, and just aggregate up the amount of uh, stock in a given period of time. They also have the time that it was input so they can look at a snapshot in time to see when books were input versus when they were not there. And you can then see this buildup of the data over time. So we can take this snapshot over and over because of the timestamp and people can choose which version of the data they want or they can aggregate it as a whole if they desire. So hopefully this has benefited you. And if, if you did, please hit the like button. We'll have other videos to share. Thanks.